from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COV is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Good afternoon. It's great to have your company, of course. My name's Kyle Rodder. I'm here with Danny Aku. Yay. And uh, Danny, it's uh, been a pretty positive day, it has to be said. It has. It's been a very positive day. Um, just having a look at the ASX 200, uh, well, up about 0.9% at the moment. What have we got there on the SIBO? 0.98%. Yeah, so almost uh, almost up 1%. I think when I checked early in the afternoon, this was before, uh, well, we basically have reached the highs of the day. We're up at about a two-month high. And uh, crucially as well, back above 7,300 yeah. for the local bourse. So um, looking quite constructive, it has to be said, out there. And um, well, it's probably a good um, segue straight into to the three themes for the day because, well, the market opened higher. It was you know, 0 0.1, 0.2% of whatever it happened to be. But uh, really after 11.30, those RBA mm. minutes seemingly stoking. Well, I'm moving the Aussie dollar, moving yields, but of course equities too. And um, Absolutely. Well, well, we'll see if it's justified or not, but certainly raising hopes of a maybe slightly less hawkish RBA than previously imagined. Yeah, it's really funny because they are just, uh, you know, going to be data dependent. But I suppose that just the fact that they considered leaving rates on hold at the last meeting, um, maybe that's the factor because as you say, we've seen quite a pronounced rally in the share market and also the Aussie dollar selling off further into this afternoon session. So clearly the markets took it as dovish. The REIT sector was very, very strong today. Yeah, indeed. Which and is uh, a classic interest rate play. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, um, it certainly was. And uh, well, every sector was higher for the day. Uh, so that uh, sort of tells you again the broad basedness, if I can call it the, the, the breadth of the rally. Um, but uh, a few other developments too in the markets. We also had uh, China's PBOC. Absolutely. Um, well, it was well flagged. I think it was sort of filtered through the media as it often is um, a, a week in advance when there was already some moves last week in some other key policy rates. Yep. But five year loan prime rate down by 10, uh, cut by 10 basis points, one year loan prime rate yep. cut by 10 basis points. So at least it's signaling potentially China could be heading in the right direction. Well, they're trying, aren't they? Yes, and that's all we can ask. <laughs> the PBOC eh? is definitely trying to get the consumer going. I mean, it's just interesting that in, that infrastructure package that the Wall Street Journal had flagged last week, that hasn't appeared. But hey, that's not stopping from the buyers from coming out and uh, buying the, the likes of the material stock. And uh, definitely energy's been on a bit of a roll as well. People looking for a, I suppose, stronger China growth. I did note though, quite a few brokers, mm. uh, Citigroup have come down and downgraded GDP growth for China, Bank of America as well. But possibly they'd all been up at 6%, 6.3% and they're pulling it down to around 5.5%, which yep. probably is what Beijing is targeting anyway. Yeah, well, it's sort of a mm. five or so any, uh, uh, anyway. So hopefully, um, well, maybe all the bad news is, is in the price. But um, last but not least, just wanted to highlight too, obviously we've got uh, the US back online tonight. So we'll start to get some more normal trading conditions, obviously. Public holiday for Juneteenth there in the States. Uh, futures are pointing to a little bit of a flat open, it has to be said. But nevertheless, uh, let's just crisscross some of the areas of the market, sectors wise now, uh, that we want to take a look at. We did mention the metals and mining mm -hmm. players. And uh, well, here are the major miners. You, Chris, you can probably ignore it to gold play, so um, certainly not a risk uh, risk on a pro-cyclical kind of um, a, a stock by any means. But hey, BHP up, Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals all higher. So like yep. you said, reflecting maybe some of that, uh, well, better better outlook for growth maybe. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Which and other sectors do we have up? Because well, we did see financials were very strong, but. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, energy, wanted to, to highlight yeah. too, uh, quite naturally. Very strong. Look at those uh, Woodside and Santos, both trading above 2% today. Interesting. Uh, coal stocks were on a run last week on a tear. They seem to have slowed down. Have you noted we're at five-year lows for those coal exports out of right? Newcastle? Yeah, combination so of wet weather. Really yeah, very, very, very suppressed. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, that's an interesting insight. Mm. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that, especially as it relates to Whitehaven Coal. Newhaven as well was was down yesterday as well. Um, obviously today a bit of a bounce back. Um, but I uh, actually wanted to ca cast a quick eye across the retailers because uh, we will talk about it in a second just with best and last. But um, we are set, we saw Premier uh, Investments down. There was a few other noteworthy names, uh, actually Domino's Pizza, which you know I suppose it doesn't sit necessarily in retailers, but it's a, it's a consumer stock. Yep. Uh, lower again, yep. um, disappointing investors with a, its uh, guidance downgrade recently. Um, but a little bit of a bounce back, I suppose, for, for some of those other names in terms of JB Hi-Fi and Harvey Norman. Um, let's get to the banks though, last but not least, rate sensitive and uh, we'll broad based strength there as well. Absolutely, Commonwealth Bank now, uh, well actually Westpac today, 
And uh, NAB leading the charge there. Macquarie had been very strong into the back end of last week, so it's taking a relative breather. But yeah, very, very, I mean, it's interesting because they were all the laggards, weren't they, for ages. And uh, now the, the big Aussie blue chips, so to speak, the financials and the materials taking, taking the helm again. Mm, indeed. So, um, like I said before, broad based strength, it does look like every sector is actually going to finish higher today, which I guess is the, the effect of, yeah. of interest rates, it, right? It sort of ends up being that kind of uh, rising tide metaphor, um, uh, lifting all boats. But um, also wanted to talk about some corporate news today, especially best and less, because you made, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, a pretty specific allusion to it in your view today. I guess some. Um, would it be uh, remiss to say another one bites the dust, at least when it comes to its guidance? <laughs> it was a 65% fall in, uh, I think, earnings they're looking at. I mean, the share price, I think there's an offer on the table for them, but we shouldn't us underestimate, um, and I was just chatting about this with David Bassanese from Beta Shares, how much these interest rates are really biting a huge chunk of Australian society and I guess who's going to join us soon also we've discussed that with him and then you have the other chunk of Australians who have lots of savings the boomers they don't have any debt and they're absolutely fine but best and less is just another case in point of how much pain there is out there um, for the consumer mm. in certain segments. Yeah, well, I mean, I just to, to sort of, I guess, shoehorn in uh, the little view that I wrote yesterday was just sort of some anecdotes that I heard around, um, mostly millennials, obviously, that's uh, mm. my, my cohort. Um, but a couple of folks at uh, a party that my sister was attending um, moved out of their home to rent it out because they can no longer re meet the repayments. Yeah. So clearly are being squeezed from a cash flow mm. perspective mm. there as well. Um, but other rents that I've heard of uh, in my uh, apartment complex down in Melbourne are 25% higher and people on incomes of you know, 70 or 80 grand or Crazy, something like that. Crazy, isn't it? Below the average of the, the, the median time full-time wage or whatever of a, of a, of a bloke. Um, so not high income people by any means, no. having to fork out you know, two, two and a half grand for, for housing a month. So all mm. these little indicators that people are pushing money, you know, obviously to mm. the essentials, away from discretionary spend. Mm. Um, so uh, clearly concerning there. So that's, well, again, the best and less um, story today. Uh, there was also AGL as well. I don't know if you got across this one, but um, a bit of news of some upgrades out there to, yes. for the company. Yeah, uh, UBS, I think, upgraded the price target at around $12.50, I think. Um, you know, obviously felt the uh, expectations that were announced at the Investor Day were much better than expected and how they're going to manage their capital as they invest the three to four billion dollars that's needed to, for 2030 transition. So uh, I definitely think that this stock has probably surprised a lot of people. Um, you know, we did have corporate activity at one point in time mm -hmm. and that all fell in a heap um, with Mike Cannon Brooks and Brookfield who then moved on to Origin. But yeah, um, continues to be uh, seeing upgrades. Indeed, and uh, it was, obviously you can see the, the one year chart there, but it was modestly higher today. Um, also in the news, Centuria uh, Capital Group uh, acquired uh, a Western Australian shopping centre for Australian dollars, 16 million. That was the uh, a Bustleton shopping centre. And uh, in fact, it was our stock of the day. We have really Philip Heck Van Dyke and uh, Philip Pepe giving their view on Centuria Capital. Until the world wakes up to itself and realises that those NTAs aren't real uh, or aren't effective because we haven't, it's not a proper liquid market, they're probably not as cheap as that analysis suggests that they yeah. are. So not all of them, but some of them. So I'm going to call this sector a hold because this whole argument is um, it's at a material discount to NTA. The NTA is not always real. Yeah. It's going to take some time for it to adjust. We're about to come into the June. If you're very positive about it, then we should have lower bond yields. Yeah. Which means these undervalued trusts, they, they bonds say they will have a jump. Right. Um, but as long as that, that, that remain, remains unanswered, you have discount. And we're obviously waiting on, on transactions to come through. So we get a clearer picture, hopefully in August, yeah, probably a little bit too early, but we will get some adjustments. I think, given the the, the tradition, the legacy that, the, that these guys have, and this is, they are amongst the let's say the more entrepreneurial teams in the market. You can give them the benefit of the doubt. I think also because you're buying at a discount. Yeah, I mean you're getting seven percent plus in 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 yields. Um, I don't think I've seen anyone who covers this sector suggesting that they will have to have to cut their their, their okay. payout. 
And you just have to trust on the fact that, because it, the, the knife cuts both ways. These guys are constantly on the lookout to acquire assets, which they now probably can do at a discount, and mm. sell them onwards and make, make a return out of that. That's basically the, the, the bread and butter what they do. Yeah. So you have to trust that these guys keep doing what they're doing, and given enough time, you'll end up on, on the positive and right. short So it seemed like there might have been um, differing opinions yeah, on that absolutely, one potentially. And, absolutely. Uh, let's throw out that cliche. It's what makes a market, of course. <laughs> so uh, that's what we want to hear, some robust debate. And that was uh, Centuria uh, uh, there. But um, well, let's get to our guest for the show today, Martin Crabb, Shaw and Partners. He joins us at the desk. Because, well, more often than not, he does on a Tuesday. Martin, great to see you. Good to see um, you too. Let's just start with, obviously, probably the news of the day, which is the RBA minutes. Um, maybe cooled expectations for... Um, future rate hike from, from the RBA. Yeah, I mean, the whole narrative around the, the hike was hawkish, but then this this term, finally balanced. <laughs> the decision was finally balanced. So maybe it's not as hawkish as everyone thought. But, you know, I've, I've read the statement and, you know, you've got to sort of go over it with a fine-tooth comb and look for what word changed from last time. Yeah. But still clearly they're concerned that they're not doing enough. And there's this spectre of services inflation uh, persisting and pushing wages up and then it gets out of control and they can't stop it or the only way they can stop it is absolutely butchering the economy which I think they're doing anyway I mean we've mentioned best and less um, people are supposed to be trading down so best mm. and less should be getting mm. the benef the benefit of people trading down but you know same store sales down 12 percent and as you said Danny profits have just evaporated right mm. so profits are down from 10 to two and a half or three mm. or something mm. so the people that should be the beneficiaries mm. of people trading down are just getting smashed as well. Mm. So all of the data that we look at, and um, we look at ANZ card data, mm. look at CBA card spending data, we look at the UBS Evidence Lab survey, which they just produced, all say exactly the same thing. We've hit the cliff. The cliff has arrived, and it's like 20% down in spending. So I think there's a number of measures you can look at, and certainly we look at at Shoren Partners, that suggest that the cliff has arrived. and get ready for more downgrades. So if you haven't downgraded already, you're going to. And if it wasn't for Brett Blundy bidding for best and less, God knows what that share price would have done. So our good friends at ANZ Research uh, published this last week. They're looking at their own card data. So it's not like mm. everyone in Australia, but it's mm. relatively representative. And you can just see that travel, which has been the, the one bright spot. I mean, that's looking at down 20, joining grocery shopping, um, sorry, di dining and takeaways holding up. So we're still, we're still hanging on to dining and takeaway, or was that the, uh, yeah, sorry, groceries is holding up, dining and takeaway is down as well. So it kind of feels that like the current um, experience is okay, it's the forward looking stuff that looks nasty. So yeah, I just think, yeah, we're in for a pretty tough kind of second half of the year based on that Absolutely. evidence. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, and I think we've got a great chart about what's, what this means or what the market's looking for in terms of forward EPS growth. Yeah. Uh, because I know there's been some um, criticism in the US or concern that possibly going into their quarterly earning season um, that the forecasts are too high. Yeah. But you brought along interesting chart there. So we're looking at what, minus 1.7% growth for the 12 next 12 months. months. Forward. The next yeah. 12 months. So this is trailing, sorry, forward earnings over trailing earnings. And obviously you can see the impact of COVID big down and then big up. And then a sort of bumpy recovery as we went into lockdown then came out. But the trend's been clearly lower. And that's despite the fact that iron ore prices mm. probably 40 bucks higher than everyone thought it should be. So you've had that part of the market being upgraded, but banks have clearly been downgraded. So as they came out with their results and just showed how bad competition was mm. or how fierce it was, but it's now the general industrial. So retail is obviously a big part of that. But even a, even a, um, a quality growth stock like CSL, mm. You know, they've got FX going against them. They've got costs going against them. So it's really, really difficult for companies to hold on to the margins. Now, I know from personal experience that analysts don't tend to, to um, forecast costs. They just say, we'll forecast revenue and then stick a margin on it. And the margin miraculously goes up over time, which it doesn't, right? But so, um, so I think analysts have all got costs wrong. So costs are going to be higher and revenue in particular parts of the economy is going to be lower. And that's horrible for, uh, for forward profit. So look, this is a pretty, a pretty laboured story. You know, we're going into a recession. Why is the share market going up? But we are going to start seeing, you know, hard evidence of a, of a harder landing. 
I was just looking at Danny then, it's, as you said, it was like he gave away one of her secrets when it came to, to, to the, the broker tricks of the trade. I'm uh, taking notes here between the both of you, obviously far more experienced I have I. to say off camera, I can't possibly say off on camera what yeah. someone once said no, to no, me. No, no, no comment perhaps from, from Danny there. But um, so would that be fair to say then, you know, we are talking about this um, kind of optimism in the market right now and this certain reversal in sentiment that um, any kind of, well, recession which ought to manifest in earnings, well, isn't necessarily in the price yet? Yeah, I'll look, I think so. So I'm a I'm simple guy. So for the price to go up, earnings need to go up or the PE needs to go up. For the PE needs to go up, you need lower risk or lower bond yields. And I don't see either of those things happening. I think risk is really underpriced in the VIX at a, like an all time low. So I just go, well, I know the path of earnings is down. Mm -hmm. So for share prices to go up, I must be missing something. So, so we're underweight equities and obviously it's hurting us at the moment because the market's gone up seven days in a row. And I think on today's rise, it's probably up 4% this month. And some stocks, you know, 52 week highs, James Hardy's 52 week high, Zero's 52 week high, uh, Whitehaven's up 20% this month. So there's been a lot of big moves. And as everyone says, the seven biggest stocks in the world are up 65% this mm, year. Mm. So, you know, if you're short, you're, you're wrong at the moment. But I just think, you know, the poor tens are that earnings are going to be lower and it's difficult to see PE ratios rise. Therefore, prices have to adjust. Mm. Yeah, I will. I, it has been one of those rallies where the people that have called it said, why didn't you see it? And yeah. then there's been a lot of us sitting here going, you know, probably one of the most hated rallies, except the only thing is, I guess, if you're sitting in cash, you are getting a return this time around. Correct. At least you're getting 4 or 5% on your money, whereas previously you just sat there getting zero. So, look, it, it doesn't hurt to be in cash at the moment, seeing the market go up. So, but I think it's, yeah, I mean, obviously everyone was too bearish at the start of the year. Everyone was too bearish going into the... The, the first reporting season we had, I think everyone's probably a little bit too optimistic. So I think the market's probably swung. So nothing creates a bulls more than rising prices. Nothing creates bears more than falling prices. And because we've had rising prices, bears have become bulls, which has kind of helped turn it around. So one of the macro people I follow has been 20% growth, 80% income all year. Mm. and just capitulated and gone 33.67. So they've started to move into growth assets because the pain of being short is too great. So you find that happens, but I don't think that's a particularly compelling reason to buy the market. No, oh, indeed. Um, well, it's going to be interesting. It's that uh, classic flows before pros or vice versa for argument. So um, always interesting. But um, Martin, great to have you on the desk again. Martin Crapham for our Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get to the leaders in that guard, shall we? And uh, off we go with the leaders, I should hope. And um, I'll start there things off. Go. There we go. Magellan, um, couldn't find any... Um, yes, there's, there's somebody buying up options in it or something I saw oh, okay. last week. I yes. was trying to Google what, what it was. It was, wasn't on the, um, yeah. the mainstream Yeah, I yet. think it might be speculation of maybe somebody moving on to the register. I think I saw that on Friday. Ooh, oh. Heard it here first, potentially. Okay, yeah. so we'll keep an eye on Magellan. Um, again, I couldn't find too much um, reason in terms of fundamentals behind a lot of the moves here. Um, necessarily just doing my um, cursory Google search before, but I mean, you've got Live360 up for 4.2%, uh, volatile stock just in general. Yeah. Uh, Ingham's uh, eating more chalk recently? No, it could be all a case of just the laggards doing a bit of a catch up. Yeah. I haven't looked at Hub24 for ages or Credit Corp, but you know, if you're going to get um, one of those rotational rallies, which we seem to be getting, uh, that's sometimes what actually takes place. They uh, start buying, oh, well, I suppose it's coming off the bottom, just having a look at Hub24. So if you're a chartist, you probably say, oh, well, that's turned positive. The market's going to rally. There's some upside there. There you go. I so don't maybe, know if there's maybe any a, updates. They call it the dash for trash, don't they, when, when all the, 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 the crappy ones a bit, start I think to, that's to a run. bit harsh. I don't think it's trash, but anyway, no. no. I, think, I think Rudy threw, threw out that one at one point last year, the old dash for trash. But anyway. Yeah, um, but not for Hub24. Not for Hub24. No, not for Hub24. I think that's a bit no, harsh. No, I, uh, no just uh, tongue-in-cheek there, of course. But um, let's get across the laggards because you're going to – uh, really have your heart in your, oh, heart in your mouth Lake. with Lake Resources wow. invested. That's about 40% in two days now. So yes. really painful. Um, obviously, I'm not an enge engineer, um, but some issues at one of its Argentinian They've delayed mines. for many, many years, haven't they? Uh, well, I, I suppose so. Again, yeah, the, they the, have. the nuance there mm. always sort of confuses me with mm. the miners. But um, yeah, a severe de delay is going to be a very big 
hit to the business's operations, obviously future profitability. So um, again, 40% in about two sessions, unfortunately. Um, but we were talking about some of those retail um, stocks that were underperforming maybe, uh, or consumer stocks perhaps, premium investments down a little bit, Domino's down a little bit. Um, other names at Lissarturia and Brainship Holdings, Brainship, you know, you, you yeah. never know from one day to the next yeah. why it's gonna be higher or lower, other than, you know, if there's a nice article about AI somewhere in the world that um, the algorithms can scrape and then buy further AI stocks, as I often jest. But, um, there you go, there are the laggards. Now let's get across the small caps too, see if there was anything there or just, I'll, I'll give you 50 bucks if you can pronounce that. Next Gen Energy Canada. Oh, okay, actually no, there you go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's, we, we've yeah, I think it's of, all been slammed in together. Yeah, we've, we've like Germanized it or something like that, just sort of smashed it into one, that's right. Well, it's, I'm sure it's got a ring to it. Uh, Xanadu Mines, Southern Cross Media, Retura Health Media, uh, Meteoric Resources, all at the top of the pops there. Um, look at the laggards now for the small cap space. Oh, oh poor old back. Cecil. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. Um, again, I've told you about my SEO story with that. You used to just like tag that. Oh, that's right. During, yeah. during yeah. The, the buzz years, a yep. couple of years ago, and um, it was an easy, easy way to generate some uh, passive traffic to a website. Um, Legacy Iron, yeah, nothing, nothing else there that really jumps out to me by any means. But anyway, you can get a bit of a sense there of what's happening in the small caps. and. Um, just worth saying, the Aussie dollar is trading under 68 cents, which I thought was quite interesting. Mm. Had been on a bit of a trot, but uh, yeah, obviously the minutes today and there was some profit taking coming in on Friday. So, yeah, well, yeah. I think, you know, we were talking about the miners. We were talking about perhaps not much of a move uh, in stocks after the, the, the PBOC's, PBOC's mm. decision today. But I mean, so much of that happened last week, right? We just, we, we saw that exactly. run up. The Aussie dollar was an expression of it too. But um, let's get to the news that we've got in the next 24 hours, because I have to say it's uh, disappointingly light, um, at least for, for another 24 hours until we get some bigger news uh, tomorrow. US building permits, yep. US housing starts. It can be interesting because obviously we do have some of those um, US housing sensitive stocks in our own market. Yep, absolutely. James Hardy, Reese, by way of example, it looks like the US futures are down, but some yep. days they've been down and then actually I wake up the next morning and the market's gone for another run, so who knows? Who knows, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. But um, uh, tomorrow as well, just in terms of what we have got coming up. UK CPI will yeah. be interesting. I saw um, actually food inflation for the first time in months has actually just come down. Food prices have come down in the UK. So maybe they might be expecting some easing there. Possibly so. In yeah. fact, um, I don't think you were here in the in the newsroom this morning when I shared the anecdote of my, my dear girlfriend, obviously, as you know, was yeah, back on was Friday. she was shocked, wasn't she? Well, yeah, she very smugly said, oh, it's so expensive in Norway, you wouldn't understand. And then we went to the supermarket. She goes, everything's three or four dollars more expensive than it was. <laughs> Can of, can of whatever Welcome and to Australia. Bowls. And I said, yeah, well, it's, it's everywhere, babe. So um, she was shocked three months away and uh, yeah, already um, testing the, the hip pocket there. But um, nevertheless, CPI, obviously uh, important in the UK. A clean waste strategy, uh, strategy day two, probably the only thing on the corporate front locally that you can really point at. All right. Well, that's it. It is. Close the laptop lid. Exactly. That's it. You're halfway out the door. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Just enjoying the fact that the markets are going up. That's always nice. Absolutely. I, have, uh, I, I tend to agree, and I'm sure uh, folks feel the same way at home. Um, there was a lot of good content today, so remember, you can catch up on it all on your news uh, uh, website and obviously app as well. Otherwise, have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.